Continuing on, when a user submits that form, we need to pass this information from this form to a second URL. To do that, we can use query parameters that have the same names as these HTML labels. So we see this first one is this, the second one is description, and the first one is ticket title. We'll go in and say ticket title. We'll leave the default value blank, and then we'll say description. What this does is whenever a user submits that form and they're redirected to this home page, these values will be filled. However, there's two different scenarios when viewing this home page. One is a user creates that ticket, so they're coming from the create ticket page, or they're just visiting the URL without submitting a ticket beforehand. What we can do is create conditional logic. If a user submitted a ticket, that means these query parameters will have values. And conditionally, what we can do is if these variables have a value, we can use an AND condition or an OR condition, depending on what you want to do. So description and ticket title have a value. Then we can input custom logic to write that ticket to the database. So just to review, a ticket is created. So this query parameter has a value. We conditionally say if it has a value, then add that ticket to the database. If you're just viewing it without creating a ticket before, we'll go down, we'll trigger our program, the else will be true, and then we can create the HTML and the HTTP response to return to the user without creating the new ticket. If a user creates that ticket though, we still get that HTML and the HTTP response. We just go down this side of the if tree as true. With this HTML and HTTP response, we'll just go ahead and pull that HTML code into the response. Now let's take a look at how we can build this conditional logic so when a user submits a ticket, we can write that to our database. We'll click on that Python step and click Open Editor. Then we can go and view this GitHub repository and look for number one. Number one is this conditionally add to database. So we'll copy this and paste it in. Sweet, so let's talk through this. What we're doing is we're creating a Python variable that is equal to the WayScript variable of ticket title. This variable's dictionary is just how we reference the variables that we store on WayScript. Since this is a dictionary, you can use other methods like get, or you could just reference it by the key like how I'm doing in this one. I'll just leave it as the key for right now. Then we're importing from TinyDB. We're importing the libraries that we need. TinyDB is just the database that we can use to store these entries. It's backed by a JSON file that we still need to create. And then we can insert into the DB these values. We're inserting the ticket from that form, the description from that form as well. And then we're hard coding in a status of open. We're doing this because we already know that our if statement is true. So a new ticket needs to be created and we'll just open all new tickets with that status of open by default. Okay, that was a lot going on, but we now have two new objectives that we need to do since that Python step needs a library that isn't already imported on WayScript by default, and we need that file. Let's take a look at how we can import libraries that aren't installed by default already. What we can do is open up our file manager and under the name of your script, ticket management system, if you've imported a Python step, you should have a requirements.txt file created automatically for you. Here, you can just put the libraries that you need to use and install whenever you run your Python code. For me, that's just TinyDB. Some modules are installed by default already, so you don't have to worry about them. But if you get a module not found error, then that's a great first step to do. Just go and add it to your requirements.txt. Awesome, one objective down. Now, let's go and add that db.json file so we have something to write to. We can do that by clicking the three dots to the right of your script name, then select new file, and we can create the file from here. Now, our relative reference in our Python script will have a file to read to and to write that db.json that we just created. 